Under the hood, they're both using the same mechanism to get this information. They are using a system call, meaning they are asking the kernel to get information, and the kernel knows how to work with the file system to get this information. So it's pulling this information from the inode and filling up what's called a stat buffer. The reason it's called a stat buffer is because it's using the stat system call. We can do man, two, two is for system calls, and stat. The reason you need the two there is because without it, it will give you the stat, uh, sorry, it'll give you the man page for the stat command. Notice the one here. One is where commands are. The command and the syscall share the name, so we have to manually specify two here, which gets us stat two, which is the system call. This is the underlying function. If you were in a C program, you would include this and you would call this, and this is how you actually trap into the kernel to get this information. We say, hey, let's stat this file. Let's give it a file name and a buffer to fill up, and then assuming this is successful, it will fill up that buffer with a bunch of information, which is just like a structure. So there's a whole detailed implementation here, or sorry, detailed documentation here, but as you can see, here's the stat struct, at least here's what it is on my Mac. Here's the information that will be filled up when you stat the file. So you can see the same information that the stat command gave us. We have the uh, device that the inode resides on, the inode's number. Hey, that seems like it's gonna be relevant, right? Number of links, the mode, so that'd be like the permissions, the UID, the GID, that's like who the owner, the group, and the user are, the last access, the modified, the change time. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We even have the file size here. And yeah, we get all this information when we stat the file. 